In the spring of 1944, she was hired to replace Harry Bridges, president of the International Longshore and Warehouse Union, as the lobbyist for the ILWU and the Committee for Maritime Unity. I met Harry Bridges when he came to Washington, D.C. to interview me for the job. Bridges took me to all the committee meetings where he spoke about higher wages and better job conditions. Harry Bridges was my mentor. When the war ended, the ILWU resumed its efforts to organize laborers in Hawaii. Led by regional director Jack Hall, the union convinced island workers to end ethnic discord and conduct a racially unified strike. The brutally fought 1946 sugar strike marked a turning point in union solidarity and resulted in the first successful multi-ethnic strike in the islands. In October of 1946, I received an urgent SOS from Harry Bridges and Jack Hall to return to the islands and defend 150 sugar strikers charged with criminal offenses. Harriet protested, saying she was not a trial lawyer, but Bridges convinced her, telling her she was smart, trustworthy, incapable of selling out, and most importantly, already had a license to practice law in Hawaii. A reluctant Harriet returned to Hawaii, and to her dismay, she discovered that Harry Bridges had promised the strikers that no one would go to jail. Those guys, they were scared to death of going to jail for 20 years. I was frightened to death because I wanted to be adequate, because I was a crusader and believed in my cause. In all of the years that we were constrained by alien and sedition acts, by unlawful assembly acts, no one ever dared to counter the power of the sugar planters who used them in order to bulldoze local workers into behaving very submissively. No one in the legal fraternity had ever dared to do this. Harriet had a tremendous capacity and a wonderful vision of what was right and what was wrong. Slavery was wrong. Living wages for working people was right. That really never changed. Meyer Simons, a San Francisco attorney, and founding member of the socially progressive National Lawyers Guild was hired to work with her. Like Harriet, he had to wait a year before he could take the bar and practice in Hawaii, so she was forced to handle the court appearances. I don't think there's any question Harriet couldn't have done what she did without Meyer doing what he did, because I think, as he used to say, he, you know, did the the nuts and bolts of the law practice to keep them going. In an effort to respond to the multitude of cases, Harriet pleaded for continuances. But the appointed territorial governor of Hawaii, Ingram Stainback, instructed the attorney general to push the cases to trial. One day, in order to make court appearances on three different islands, she chartered a plane. She asked me, there's one more seat left, Jim. You want to take a ride? I said, sure, I'd like to. So I hopped on. We came in on a small twin-engine airplane, coming over Malaya Flats. It bounced around so much and rattled so much. I said, Harry, this plane is going to fall apart. She said, oh, no, Jim, don't worry. The pilot also loves his life. And she was right there on the front lines. And she put herself out there in a period of time, just like some of the lawyers in Detroit and elsewhere when the CIO was organizing, who um, very selflessly uh, put themselves out there and made it clear that they were throwing their lot in with the workers and with the working class that was fighting for justice. A decidedly unfriendly judiciary, often hostile to labor, shaped Harriet into a fearless litigator who worked tirelessly for her clients. Two significant changes resulted from Harriet's legal challenges. Because of Harriet's persistence, juries more closely reflected Hawaii's diverse population. Secondly, Harriet's challenges brought a modification to the territory's Unlawful Riot and Assembly Act and to the conspiracy statute that made a striker less vulnerable to criminal charges. And if we didn't have 
I read Boss Log and Simons, probably a lot of us would have been in jail. You can imagine how local workers felt. For the first time, they felt that their complaints against sugar employers was in fact valid and that there were attorneys who were willing to represent them. In the end, Harriet made good Harry Bridges' promise to the workers. Not one striker went to jail. Harriet formed an official partnership with Meyer Simons. Their primary client was the ILWU. What made Harriet Bosley and Meyer Simons a good team was that they both believed ultimately in the same ideals. I don't think it was always easy for them to work together because we're talking about extremely strong personalities here. In order to have the courage that it took to be a labor lawyer in Hawaii in that period, you had to be an iconoclast, an independent, a visionary. Meyer certainly shared the same commitments. He came out here to do the same things. But he was not the fiery uh, uh, battler that she was. She liked to be in the trenches 